Now back in September I made a video about my steel frame baseboards and recently there's a viewer question asking how the system fitted together. So as I've been working on them a bit more this week I thought we'd go through it today. Now I'm sorry to bore regular viewers with some material that I've been through previously but if you're new here then it's important to understand that when I set out to build this project it was built really or the, it was designed really so that I could use it to take photographs. Now it's necessary to build the thing in small sections because to build the whole thing in all its entirety would just be, um, be too big. So I've made it in small sections the longest measurement of any one of the sections is 1200 millimeters so the basic unit size is 1200 by 300 or 4 feet by 3 feet. Now the idea was always that when this was assembled that I would be able to remove a section vertically and take that out of the way and I could put a camera in so in this case I've got a GoPro but it could be any camera and I could insert a camera and shoot down the lines uh, turn it round, shoot from any direction. And the idea was that these things might even slide along and I can move the camera um, or keep the camera static and, and move the panels. But for that to work it's absolutely essential that the panels could lift out vertically. Now it seems to me fairly common practice when assembling something like this to use timber baseboards with a, a timber frame around each section and then these sections would typically bolt together usually with interconnecting dowels through the joint and, and maybe some bolts or screws and that's fine um, and that's fine unless that structural connection is necessary for the thing to stand up and by that I mean if we have a set of legs here and a set of legs here and they're bolted in the middle that's fine but if I want to remove one board then the thing's going to topple over. So it was necessary for me to think how was I going to overcome that? I didn't want to end up with a pair of legs or trestles under each board because there could well be as many as 15 of these boards in total. That's going to be an awful lot of legs. So I had to come up with an alternative system for supporting these that allows me to take them apart. Now then, another self-imposed constraint with my design for the baseboards was that I wanted the profile of them to be as thin as possible. And really that was all about storage space. When this is all complete, I want to be able to pack it away and store it in a small space. So I wanted this, this thickness here to be really thin. And clearly if I'm going to build this over, it could well be 40 feet long in total if I, if I was to continue with it. So bearing in mind that it could be that big, I need to think very carefully about how I'm going to achieve structural strength in, in such a, in, you know, in a thin thickness. And this has been my solution. Let's just move the camera in and we can have a look at it a little bit more. This stuff here is called Unistrut and it's a rolled galvanized section um, and it's typically used for in sort of construction and um, industrial applications. You'll see it in factories bolted to walls and um, machinery might be hung from it. You might see it on the side of office buildings, air conditioning units hanging to it. It's quite freely available. You can get it everywhere, but it's also very, very strong. So the principle behind what I'm doing here is that there are lengths of um, this unistrut which will run the full length of the model uh, with connections between its different lengths. Um, and these form rails onto which the boards will sit. So the boards are held up by these rails. Now at the moment I've just got a little plastic trestle, but in time I will make proper legs. And one of the great things about this Unistrut system is that you can get all sorts of brackets and things that will bolt onto it. So I could probably just go and buy a bracket that will, will take a similar piece downwards as a leg. Anyway, for now it's on trestles and it works fine. So you could see the, the basic board construction is a, 
steel tubular frame and this is a 40 by 20 millimeter rectangular hollow section plywood tops and that sits on this unistrut, unistrut frame now that doesn't deal with the issue and this really was the the viewers comment uh, a few weeks ago and, and he asked how am I aligning the boards between between board joints clearly if you've got tracks running across the boards it's necessary that these boards will be perfectly lined up and of course that's the great advantage of using dowels and bolts in a let's say a more traditional setup but I can't have those because as I said previously I need to be able to lift this vertically so it seemed to me any fixing system I use also has to be vertical and this is what I've come up with underneath each of these frames is a hidden fixing we can't see it at the moment because of the camera angle but let's imagine this unistrut has slotted holes along its length I'll, I'll put an example of it up on the screen so underneath the frames I've added an, a threaded insert to the, the frame material and I'm just using a simple screw that will come up through the slot and that engages in a threaded insert which is fitted into this tube now I'll show you the threaded inserts in just a moment now these are I'm just using some temporary screws at the moment what I will be doing is on my lathe making some proper bolts with a, a shouldered end which will fit exactly across the width of this slot so that when that pushes in the shoulder on the fitted bolt will prevent this from moving side to side and so that's how I'm going to achieve a precise linear alignment between each board and then these screws will simply take out from underneath and the board can be lifted away to be returned and screwed back in exactly where it was before so these boards are all independent of one another so this is a small piece of the tubular steel section that I've used to make the frames for my baseboards and this is a rivnut this is the threaded insert that I'm using um, to to bolt the baseboard frames to the unistrut material I just showed you now in case you've not seen a rivnut before it's a sort of a little top hat device and inside it I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick that up there is a thread in this case it's it's m8 and that simply gets inserted into the, the pre-drilled hole and it's compressed a little bit like a pop rivet now I'm going to use or I have been using this tool which is a, a rivnut tool um, but you don't need one of these you can just do it with a just use a bolt works so basically it's just a bit like a pop rivet that sits on there the rivnut pushes into the material and then I squeeze the arms of the tool together which is a lot easier when you're not on camera there we go tighten the knob give it another little squeeze that's it and then the rib nut and screws from the tool and that's a lot quicker when you're not trying to film yourself doing it and so there you go now I don't know if the cameras if we can see if I can focus in there very basically that process of riveting the rivnut or squeezing the rivnut has caused the rivnut to deform and kind of form itself around the inside profile of the tube and as there's a flange on the outside that's now permanently fixed and we could put a bolt or whatever we like into there and so that's how I'm using um, bolts to connect this to my unistrut base frame so then this is the end board that the station was sitting on a moment ago and if you remember from my December update video this is too small I changed my plans after this board was made and I said that I'd be making a new one so that's what I'm going to do or rather that's what I have done so I'll swap this one out and show you the new one And so this shows the new 
kind of station building uh, frame in place. Now I've not got the plywood top on here yet and I thought this was a good time at which to see how it sits on top of the unistrut base rails. So the frames will be bolted with a minimum of four, some boards it's slightly more than that, screws that will come up through the slots in this frame and locate into precisely measured positions on these uh, on these frames. Now the unistrut itself um, is extendable so I buy it in six meter lengths and I've, I've cut them down and I'm working with sort of eight foot lengths at a time but there are these connectors available which simply bolt between the sections so I can extend the unistrut indefinitely and the way this has all been laid out these connectors fall within the voids between the frames of the various baseboards so as I build more of these frames so I can extend the system out further and further. But there's another advantage to using the Unistra and I'll briefly get into that now. Now in this shot we can see the Unistra section and this is the frame of the end board which will be the board the station building sits on. And you can see I've not yet fitted the Rivnut inserts into this frame yet but not to worry they'll all go in. Now, because the Unistrut is a channel section, it's my intention to run all of my um, DCC bus wiring will run inside the channel. And I shall make um, little fittings that sit inside there to hold those cables. Now the plan is that I will use some more of these Rivnut inserts, probably a slightly larger size than this. And these will be inserted through the frame horizontally at several points along its length. In fact, each base board will have one of these rib nuts underneath it. And the idea is the DCC bus wiring will come out into a, a plug, or rather a socket, which will be embedded inside here. So that each board will have a single cable which will plug into here. The idea being that it's just undo the four screws, pull the plug out, and then the board can lift away vertically. And the advantage to doing things that way, rather than having the wiring daisy chain from one board to the next, is that I can lift a board out and the rest of the layout will remain live. So it'll be possible to lift a board out, set a camera up, film a, a train approaching, um, and then stop the camera just before it drops in the gap where the board's been removed, and then put the board back in, um, let the train carry on its journey having reset the camera. So that's the idea. It should mean that every single board could operate independently and I think that might be useful for example with could just have the engine shed set up with the engine simmering away inside that sort of thing. So that's the idea the DCC bus wiring will all run inside here and being as it's in a channel section this will all be completely protected and there are little closure plates that you can get for this stuff that will clip onto the bottom of here so that all that wiring will be entirely protected and because it's sat inside a steel channel it's not going to get knocked about in transit. Again this was sort of the, the thinking with these things being put in they're practically flush once they're fitted so there's nothing there to get broken off or get damaged during transit. Now it's my intention that the channel that runs down the other side will have a similar treatment with these inserts added in but all of the control wiring for things like the uh, the points and the signals and whatever will run in the second conduit that will run the length of the of the railway as it's built and again it keeps the signal and the power wires um, separate um, by signal I don't mean semaphore signal I mean sort of data signal so this will be my kind of data network for the control side of things um, and the sort of the power to the trains will run through the other side. That's the thinking. Well I hope that little overview of how I'm intending to interconnect all these boards and how they work with the Unistrut rails, I hope that was of interest and has answered some questions from those of you who are wondering how it was all going to go together. Now I'm well aware that using steel as a framework for assembling this type of a model is a little bit unusual. I think most people usually make a, a wooden frame and a plywood top and it's fairly 
conventional way to do it. And there's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, if I wasn't planning to build something that was quite as vast as this could potentially end up being, then that's exactly how I would go about doing it. I'm in no way in this video suggesting that the materials and methods I've used are the way to, to do it. It's, that's not the purpose of this video. I'm just showing you what I've done. That said, these boards have worked out beautifully. Now I'm assembling this thing in a very, very small space. And so these boards are being lugged around constantly all the time, picked up, put down. And the fact that they have a, a steel frame means I can stand them on end. Nothing's going to kind of get bent or knocked or damaged. They're really robust and surprisingly lightweight too. I think weight wise, they would be comparable with the timber structure. So I'm really pleased with that. And what I might do is at some point make a, a, another video showing perhaps a more conventional application for using steel in this kind of application because I've had so many thoughts around how it could even be done better than I've done it. It's sort of in light of the experience I've had. So perhaps we'll return to that in a future video. Now I'll put a link in the description to my first video that I made around the design of these baseboards and those of you who've come here recently and haven't seen that it might be worth checking that out and kind of getting the background to where I'm at. But somebody commented on that video and they said that the problem with using a steel frame is that you can't alter it if you change your mind or you want to make modifications. Well, it just so happens that today I've <laughs> I've been doing just that. There was a feature on the uh, Bexhill West Station that I thought I wouldn't bother with. Um, no one will know. And then I've thought about it a little bit more and I thought, well, actually, people do know about it, so I need to include it. And that's meant that I've had to modify uh, one of the baseboards. So I'll put a picture on the screen. This is quite a crude photo and this is halfway through the job and it looks horrendous. Um, not to worry, next week I'll come back and I'll show you how that's ended up and it's finished up being quite a nice little job. I'm quite pleased with it. But it just goes to show that these things are modifiable um, and, and because we don't have to wait for glue to set and stuff like that when you're working with steel, you just weld it and that's it, it's done and dusted. Um, modifications are quite quick and simple to effect. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed today's video and there'll be another one back for you next week. So until then, cheerio. Now I've just finished the edit for this and I realised watching it back that I've sort of spouted on about how wonderful steel is in that final segment and I realised that the vast majority of people watching this are never going to use steel and may not have the facilities um, or, or possibly the skills to use it even if they wanted to and, and that's totally fine as I said I'm not suggesting that this is the way it ought to be done however what I will say just to kind of fill out what I have said is that I kind of alongside most of you know that my day job is as a school teacher um, I teach sort of woodwork and metalwork but alongside that I also work as a steel fabricator now, I've not done much work in 2020. I think COVID and stuff has sort of put pay to all the sort of commissions that I normally get. In fact, that's half the reason why I've got the time to make these videos. But I'll put on screen just a few pictures of some of the things that I've made um, sort of in recent times. I'll just give you an idea that that's sort of where my uh, skill set lies within that sort of steel fabrication, sort of light engineering um, sort of industry, if you like. So whilst I've made a video here about the steel frame baseboards, I'm not suggesting that everyone go and do it. This is not a how to video, but just from somebody who has some experience of working in that field, it's just another set of ideas, some food for thought. That's all it is. So I'm definitely not suggesting that if you've made a timber frame baseboard that that's wrong. It's almost certainly right for 99.9% .9 of all applications. I'm just showing you steel as an alternative. Anyway, that's definitely all from me. Until next time, cheerio.